What is going on, everybody? So the Madden season is in full swing, coming off of the Philly Challenger and the Madden Classic. So I figured it would be a good time to go ahead and make another meta breakdown, which I haven't done in a little while. So it's basically going to be kind of partitioned into three parts, I guess. Kind of the first part is going to be um, me talking about what I think is really good right now offensively and defensively and what you see a lot of in competitive play. And I'm going to talk about for reg teams, kind of go through a reg team tier list and then also go through a playbook tier list, which the playbook tier list has kind of become more subjective. I think it all comes down to what style of offense you want to run. And then uh, once you kind of identify, okay, I want to run gun bunch. I want to run, you know, single back tight slots. I want to run deuce close, whatever. Uh, then there's like a subset of playbooks that basically it comes down to preference. So it's kind of harder to do that. But anyway, so the first part about what I think is really good. Well, obviously we're coming off of the Madden Classic where Skimbo played Joke in the finals and Skimbo ended up winning. Uh, but that was a matchup between two gun bunch offenses. Um, two pretty different gun bunch offenses, although they did kind of revolve around two very similar plays in PA post and corner strike. Uh, but the setups were very different and it was interesting to see how they kind of contrasted with each other. And then the Philly tournament, we're coming off of Ghost just won that against Drini. And Ghost was also running a variation of Gun Bunch out of the West Coast playbook, running a lot of that mesh post, which, I mean, if you guys would have told me uh, a few months ago that, you know, mesh post would basically single-handedly win a Challenger event, I probably would have thought you were crazy, but Ghost definitely made it happen, so props to him. Uh, but... So I guess you guys can kind of see Gun Bunch is once again very strong. You know, Madden 17 ran Madden 17. Madden 18 looks like it's going to do much of the same. Uh, you have some other people running some kind of niche offenses. Fitzmagic at the Philly tournament ran a lot of deuce close. Basically ran halfback wham the entire tournament and got to the semifinals. Um, you also have guys like Tweez obviously runs West Coast. Single back spread a lot of that. Uh, Chaos who, you know, won a challenger earlier in the year. Went to the Madden Classic, he runs kind of a trips tight end style. So you do have the different styles, but I think Gun Bunch definitely has come out on top once again. Um, so aside from Gun Bunch on offense, I kind of mentioned, you know, single back tight slots I think was really popular earlier in the year. And then I think people got halfback pitch defense. And so it's kind of gone away, at least in terms of the people who I've seen running it don't really run it anymore how they did earlier where it was basically like halfback dive halfback pitch and then every now and then throw in like deep post or whatever uh, if you guys watched ken play ken was running single back tight slots in the philly tournament and uh he basically was running a lot of hp wheel and was having you know pretty good success moving the ball uh, with his little single back tight slot scheme it was pretty cool and it was actually something that i touched on right when the game came out and i noticed that the pistol tight slots formation had been moved last year it was only in the pistol playbook now it's also in the houston texans playbook so they have not only single back tight slots but also pistol tight slots and ken actually broke that out a few times where he went from single back tight slots back into the pistol tight slots which gives you a different array of plays uh different passing plays most notably pa post shot which was a fantastic play last year from gun tight flex if you guys remember and it's still a good play this year and then also, it gives you a, just a new running game. I think they have a counter out of there along with like a HB zone, stuff like that. So in these tournaments where you can set your audibles in these challenger events, uh, it definitely opens up schemes like that where you can go from similar to formation to similar formation. Uh, since you can control those quick audibles, it might not be as good in a scene where you can't control those audibles because then you might not only or you might only get access to obviously four plays and you know the best play in the formation might not be in those four plays so I thought that was really cool and so I was I was happy to see somebody finally brought that out uh, but that's pretty much I think where the offensive landscapes at um, defensively I mean you see a lot of 3-4 I feel um, obviously the 3-4 under OLB strike 2 stuff like that uh, that you know tweeze runs and uh, you know I've seen it by a few other people but um, most notably, that sticks out in my mind. Tweez was running it in the Madden Classic where, uh, you know, you get that really good pass rush off the edge and then you put basically what he was doing was putting his middle linebacker in a deep blue. So it kind of becomes a cover three shell, but you still have your two 
deep half safeties out there and then you just roam the middle and uh, it can definitely present problems for people other than that I think obviously the best kind of pressure defense so far you've seen are the looping style bl blitzes so you still see like Skimbo and I think Chaos uh, they still run the nickel 335 odd you know crossfire type stuff um, that was really popular you know basically when the game first came out a lot of people were running like nickel 335 which is also still a thing I think joke runs that a decent amount you see a lot of you know cover two style stuff out of there um, a, a lot of cover two and like cover three uh, by association of the crossfire a lot of the crossfire blisses are three deep shells and so it's interesting to see the contrast between you know live events and tournaments and then you play like online I feel like you see a lot more cover four online than you do at these live events there could be uh, many different reasons for that but uh, I do think cover two style defenses whether it's you're in a nickel 335 Tampa 2 or a 3-4 under OLB strike 2 or uh, whatever it may be and then the looping crossfire style blitzes like the nickel 335 odd Drini was running a lot of a dollar so he was running a lot of like uh the cross three fire press out of dollar and then joke touched on why that was so good not only does it bring the pressure uh, but that hook zone defender that's in the middle so if you can visualize cross three fire press here you see uh, uh you got the three deep shell and then the two outside you know um seam flat defenders and then in the middle that strong safety who's coming down into a hook zone it's actually a three receiver hook and supposedly if you shade down uh, that three receiver hook plays super aggressively over the middle of the field and will jump a lot of drag routes and stuff a lot of quick check down so you're sending heat and you have an, a really aggressive cpu controlled defender uh, which is really really powerful in this scenario like uh, Drini was doing with the Seahawks so he had Cam Chancellor just basically like a freight train going down into the box and so that was very effective so that's something that you you're probably going to see you know as tournaments come by you you'll probably see more of that tactic it seemed to be pretty effective against you know Ghost's offense Drini seemed to give Ghost the most problems on defense uh, throughout the entire tournament for the most part Ghost was just running people over with his gun bunch so uh, that's definitely something so I think that kind of you know covers offense defense what's most effective at the time um, in terms of playbooks so playbooks I went through and looked at everybody from the Madden Classic and then top four from the Philly tournament so basically you kind of get a mix match but then once you break it down and see what people are doing they all have their specific reasons so for example, Madden Classic. So you have Skimbo and Dubby both use the Packers. So obviously Skimbo in that gun bunch, his entire scheme is based around, you know, corner strike, PA post, HP base, essentially. So obviously Packers, it's a beautiful playbook to do that out of. They have all those three plays along with other complementary plays with that. Dubby likes a lot of, you know, that gun wide trips, uh, that gun kind of doubles flex formation from the Packers. And then he also runs some gun bunch. So basically has everything that Dubby would want uh, you can dip into Gun Bunch. Him and Skimbo play a lot, I know, I'm pretty sure. And so uh, I'm sure they they kind of share their stuff. And so Dubby can always break out Skimbo's, you know, Gun Bunch offense if he wants to branch out of his own, you know, why trip stuff. Um, and then you have, okay, Tweez ran West Coast. So if you don't know, Tweez uh, was running a lot of single back spread, which was very unique at that tournament. Uh, mixed in with, it was single back spread and then it was single backs like doubles, uh, and then there's like Y flex or something along those lines. It basically looked just like single back spread, except for in the right slot, there's now a tight end and the tight ends on the line of scrimmage. So uh, that was basically his two formations uh, that he had a, a lot of success running out of. Joke and Duke both used the Buccaneers. So uh, that's another case, kind of like a Skimbo W situation where they're both lab partners and play a lot supposedly and so you could definitely see in their offenses uh, there was a lot of similarities especially whenever they played each other uh, but if you haven't seen joke play it's a lot of gun bunch a lot of PA post a lot of buck sale which is uh, a play in the obviously Buccaneers playbook gun bunch where you basically have a backside post coming from that uh, solo receiver and then a C route on the right side but a uh, joke would often motion that right side uh, C route receiver over to the left opposite side of the formation but drag him and so you'd have kind of a flood going opposite the way of the motion but uh that was kind of how, how joke liked to run his offense it was a lot of motioning uh, from the wide receiver 
in the far right of the bunch across the formation to the left or wherever the bunch was at, whether it was right or left, he would motion the far outside receiver across the formation a lot. Um, that was something that you saw out of Joke and Duke's bunch that, you know, Skimbo and Dubby, they don't really do that that often. So that was interesting to look at. You have Chaos with the Chargers. So Chaos used San Diego, or not San Diego, um, Los Angeles Chargers now. So uh, basically, he ran a lot of trips tight end. So there's a lot of different trips tight end playbooks. You have Chargers, or actually, there aren't that many trips tight end playbooks. There were last year, but this year, I think it's Chargers, Patriots, and there might be one other that just have the normal trips tight end. Uh, a lot of playbooks got that like trips tight end offset this year. Uh, but yeah, so. He used Chargers, so I guess it just comes down to personal preference in that scenario. Uh, Stevie J used the Texans. So, uh, obviously, right there, Stevie J ran a lot of single back tight slots, so just like Ken from the Philly tournament. So, a lot of single back tight slots, basically kind of like HB dive pitch option scenarios, and then um, just a lot of running the ball. He, he did audible around to different formations and whatnot, uh, but that's the playbook that stevie chose to roll with you have true boy with the falcons and true boy reminds me a lot of dreamy who used the dolphins um not in terms of like their play calling or anything but like their style it always seems like they're kind of freestyling but i'm sure they have plans but they're very tough at least for me to predict like what they want to do like guys like skimbo and like joke and even like tweez it's like okay you pretty much know what they're gonna do it's if the defense can actually stop it and you can stop him from making a, a great play whereas true boy and Drini, it's kind of like very hard for me to predict what they're gonna do on any given down they go to a lot of different formations call a lot of unorthodox plays which i really like that play style it makes it exciting and makes it you know hard to um anticipate which is good for a viewer standpoint when you don't really know what they're gonna do uh, it can be exciting. So it was a it was a good mix of playbooks there. I think what six different playbooks, I believe. So you have two Packers, two Bucks, and then you have Falcons, Texans, West Coast, and Chargers. And then uh, from the Philly tournament, the top four at the Philly tournament, which was Dreeny, Ken, Fitz, Magic, and Ghost. Uh, you have Dreeny, which I touched on, used Miami, Ken with Houston. So like I said with Stevie J, similar single back tight slot scheme. Fitz, Magic used Seattle which didn't really matter. He just basically used Deuce Close. His playbook might as well be called Deuce Close. Uh, he called HB Wham basically every rip. And then Ghost used West Coast just like Tweez, except for Ghost obviously stayed in that gun bunch a lot. So I think personally, I think it's pretty subjective. But personally, I think West Coast is currently the best playbook uh, between the gun bunch and then it's, it's hard because I guess I could have a little bias because I think that Tweez currently has the best offense that I've seen. I think Tweez has the best offense. And he doesn't run gun bunch. He runs single back spread, you know, stuff like that. However, if I had to pick what I think the best offensive formation in the game is, I think it's gun bunch. But I think Tweez has the best offense in that single back spread. If that makes sense, I don't know if that makes sense or not. That's just kind of how I think about it. So by default, every time I think, okay, what's the best playbook? I think, okay, who has the best offense that I've seen all year? And I think it's Tweez. So, and along with the fact that obviously Ghost just lit up the Philly tournament, they have that gun bunch in the West Coast. I think you get the best of both worlds. And uh, so personally, I think West Coast is the best playbook. I think arguments can be made, obviously, for other playbooks. If you're a single back tight slots player, well, then obviously West Coast isn't even going to be on your radar. If you want Deuce Close... West Coast, not even an option for you. So, like I said, it all comes down to personal preference. Um, if you want Gun Bunch, if you if you need HB base, well, then, you know, West Coast isn't your playbook. It, it has the counter, it has the sweep, and the draw. So, if you want the base, well, then you might want to look somewhere else like uh, the Packers. If you want, you know, like Buck Sale, like Joke runs a lot of, you might want to look at, I think Buccaneers have it. I think the Patriots might have a play similar to that as well. So, it all comes down to preference. Uh, when it comes to choosing like a playbook like that personally i think the best gun bunch playbook is probably the packers um i think hb base is really good but i can definitely see cases where you pick you know playbooks like the buccaneers or uh even like new england if you want trips tight in like i said earlier 
Uh, it, you know, New England's a great option in my opinion. They have some unique plays out of their trips tight end that no other playbooks have. If uh, but New England's kind of a particular playbook in in the sense that they don't have many like crazy unique formations. Also, it's kind of polarizing with their single back tight slots because like if you're a single back tight slots player and you want that dive in the pitch, well, New England, I'm not even sure if they have the pitch. But I know for a fact they're run audible. So, so well, this doesn't matter in uh, in the terms of you know these tournaments where you can set your audibles. But at least in terms of online, so no, they do not have the pitch. So that's a big thing uh, with New England not having the pitch. A lot of people like that dive pitch combo out of single back tight slots. Also, if you're in a situation where you can't set your audibles, then the run audible, the default run audible in the Patriots single back tight slots is the draw, which a lot of people don't like because the dive is such a good run this year. So it really hurts not having quick access to that dive. You have to come out in it if you want to be able to run it, which limits your options in the passing game because now you're passing out of, you know, these stock audibles. And, uh, you know, it, it's not everybody's cup of tea, if that makes sense. So uh, on top of that, New England is also a polarizing single back tight slots. They're the only one that has drag cross-ups, which has been proven to be a pretty good play. I would say, and so it, it definitely comes down to personal preference. They have HB wheel as well, but they don't have deep post, which a lot of people like out of that single back tight slots. So that could be something if you really need deep post or you really need the pitch, then obviously New England is you know instantly off your radar. If you really love drag cross ups, well then New England's like your only option. So basically, what I'm trying to get through is that it, it's very subjective in my opinion on uh, the playbooks. Um. So I think that's about all I wanted to touch on with playbooks. In terms of reg team tier list, um, I think that the Seahawks are still the best team. Um, I think having Russell Wilson along with Earl Thomas is the best combo because I think a um, a mobile quarterback is super important. And then Earl Thomas, 91 overall or 91 zone coverage rather. Uh, there's only four defenders currently that have 91 or higher zone coverage. It's Earl Thomas, Harrison Smith, Devin McCourty, and um, Eric Berry. So that's the four defenders that have that 91 or higher zone coverage. So a lot of players really, really want a guy like that in the middle of the field for their defense. And so you see some people like Stevie J use the Vikings in the Madden Classic, Harrison Smith out there. Basically, in that Earl Thomas role, a lot of players use the Seahawks, you know, Madden Classic. So, just from the Classic, uh, top eight, or the eight people who made it to the Classic, you have Chaos, use the Seahawks, Joke, use the Falcons, and then switch to the Seahawks, Tweez, Seahawks, Skimbo, Seahawks, Dubby, Seahawks, True Boy, use the Falcons, and the Seahawks. So, six out of eight of the people uh, used the Seahawks at one point or another. Stevie used the Vikings, who basically... You have that Harrison Smith defense similar to the Seahawks. You also get Anthony Barr and maybe a better pass rush with Daniel Hunter and Everson Griffin. And then uh, Duke actually used the Falcons. So the Falcons are basically the other team. Um, Personally, I think the Seahawks are better because the Falcons don't have that guy in the middle with 91 zone coverage like Earl Thomas, although I do think the Falcons offense is better. Um, I would lean more towards the Seahawks just because of the fact they have Earl Thomas. But that's me personally. I think the Seahawks are in a tier above everybody else. I think that next tier is definitely probably you have Falcons, Vikings, and I would say after watching Fitzmagic, and if the running game is going to be as strong as it looked in that tournament with LeGarrette Blunt being as insane as he was, along with the fact that a lot of people are going towards these run-oriented offenses to get away from these 91 zone coverage defenders, which is definitely something you're going to see you kind of as the year goes on. Um... The Eagles, I think, could definitely be a team that could sneak into that tier. Or I put them in that tier. And so uh, with LeGarrette Blunt, he was just, I mean, making turning plays where he should have been stopped in the backfield for a two-yard loss and getting, you know, 13 yards off of him. So uh, watching him run through that tournament with HB Wham uh, was pretty impressive. And so definitely kind of made me jump the Eagles up the tier list. And I think the last team in that tier list, just because I I value the um or the last two teams rather in the tier list, just because I value the 91 zone coverage so highly, are the Chiefs and the Patriots. I think the Chiefs uh, could be a usable team. Their defense is all right. They're kind of slow at linebacker, and then um the the secondary aside from Marcus Peters and Eric Berry, 
Uh, Ron Parker's not as good as he used to be, and they don't really have much in depth at corner, but you do have Eric Berry with that 91 zone coverage. I think just having him alone vaults them up ahead of all the teams that are below them. Offensively, you, you can work with, you know, Alex Smith, uh, pretty mobile and, you know, pretty accurate passer. Kareem Hunt is a pretty good running back option. You have, at, you know, tight end, obviously, Travis Kelsey, top three tight end on the game, I think. Maybe top two. Might be Gronk and then him. And then you have, obviously, Tyree Kill, Chris Conley. So you have some decent receiving options out there. So I think they deserve to be in this spot. If anything, I would probably split. I probably would go Seahawks in the A tier or in the S tier above everybody. And then in the second tier, I'd probably put the Falcons. And then below them, like they're so close, I'd put them in the same tier. But I would probably weigh the Falcons a little bit better than all the rest of these teams. The Vikings, Eagles, Chiefs, and Patriots. Um... And the Patriots, the reason I have the Patriots in there is because of Devin McCourty. And then offensively, they have, you know, they have the weapons, Gronkowski, Brandon Cooks. Um, If you can sub in, you know, like Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan, guys like that. And then obviously a plethora of options out of the backfield. Nobody really stands out, uh, but they're usable depending on your scheme. If you're running like a pass-heavy scheme, I think, or a run-heavy scheme rather, I, you the Patriots probably won't be on your radar, but a pass-heavy scheme, I could see getting their offense to work. The main problem with them is that mobile quarterbacks are so good, and despite Tom Brady being the best quarterback in the game, he's a statue, and so that could really, really hurt you when plays break down and when you know people are playing good defense. A lot of the times, uh, your quarterback making plays with his legs is what keeps your offensive drives alive. And uh, especially in Madden. So that being so important, I think the Patriots, if someone really, really wanted to, they could use them. But I do think, obviously, that there are better options out there. Um, Below those, you know, five or six teams, I don't think you'll probably see any of these used in an actual live event, like, super seriously. Um, I think just using any of the teams below them kind of puts you at a serious disadvantage even if you're like a homer for your team and really want to use them and represent them um I mean that's fine I'm not saying you can't win with one of the teams below them but I think all the teams below are clearly outclassed and if you're picking one of them it's mainly because of you know your personal uh, affiliation with them or you just want to use them for whatever reason I think logically uh the the top five or six teams are probably the only teams you should touch if you um want to get want to put the best chance of you winning out on the field but that's kind of my thoughts on the reg teams and obviously um the the madden classic was reg teams and then the challenger events are going to be regs but moving forward you're going to start seeing like we have draft champs going on right now which i'm sure which i know everybody's having so much fun with and then uh obviously as the year moves on you're going to have um salary cap so that's the thing that makes me wonder is I just don't know how the game's going to look whenever salary cap tournaments start rolling around because at that point you're going to have 91 zone defenders all over the secondary and probably at linebacker as well right now uh, you can get the Kendricks middle linebacker that has 91 zone coverage power up tier four and then you can also get um, I think it's the Pozlozny linebacker from the Jaguars middle linebacker I think where if you get him chemmed up, he can get up to 91 zone coverage. So there's currently two linebackers who can get to 91 zone. There might even be another that I don't know about, but those are the two off the top of my head. And by the time these salary cap tournaments roll around, there will definitely be more. So you'll definitely have guys out there that are running like, you know, three, four defenses that have eight guys on the field with 91 zone coverage. And it's going to be an absolute nightmare trying to throw the ball again against these guys because just the 91 zone is so ridiculous to me in my opinion I think it definitely needed tuning but I think they tuned it in the wrong way they like way over tuned it they overcompensated for how bad it was um in terms of like if I'm running if I have a guy running a streak down the field and Earl Thomas has turned his back running downfield stride for stride with my guy who's trying to get behind him and I'm throwing like a post route underneath it as soon as my QB starts like winding up his arm, Earl Thomas should not instantly, psychically, literally break off of the route when his when his head is facing the opposite direction. Earl Thomas should not break off of his route as soon as my quarterback lifts his arm 
and jump a post route that's like 10 yards underneath him and also instantly like stop all his momentum and reaccelerate towards you know the underneath post route so I just think it's unrealistic obviously um and I think they kind of overcompensated it so I do think it'll be interesting to see how offenses evolve as the year goes on and these salary cap tournaments do come around I think you're going to see a lot more run based offenses because it's going to be so hard to throw the ball also I'm pretty sure on Twitter it was said that either 95 or 96 zone coverage is another threshold for basically I guess even better reaction times which I don't see how that can even be possible but uh, supposedly that's what they're saying So I guess we're going to see whenever that time comes around. But it's going to be very interesting to see how offenses kind of evolve with, you know, the defenses having all these souped-up psychic defenders all over the place. And it's going to be a nightmare to try and throw the ball when you've got, you know, seven guys flying around, breaking on every route as soon as you throw it. And then you also have to worry about your opponent's user defender, who's probably going to be, you know, it used to be, you know, avoid the user at all costs. Now it's like avoid everybody at all costs. It's crazy. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. And, uh, you know, as the year goes on, only time will tell how that'll pan out. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think I kind of touched on everything I wanted to touch on. I know this was pretty long. I hadn't done one in a while. So it was, there was a lot I wanted to talk about. And uh, I try not to make my videos run on too long, but sometimes it just happens. So I'm sorry for how long it ended up taking, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know your opinions on what I thought about, you know, the playbooks, the teams, the direction of the meta on offense and defense. Let me know what I can do better for these types of videos in the future. And until next time, guys, take it easy.